In this video, we're going to take a look at a web challenge that I created for Integrity's Lead Up Live CTF. It's called Biocorp, and this is the website. I hope you like it because the UI took me like twice as long as the actual challenge. And we're on the homepage at the moment. You can go to the About Us tab where you can learn about the company and the founders, and onto the Contact tab, which has a form on it. it doesn't actually do anything, so you don't need to worry about testing that. Finally, a Services tab, which just talks about the services that the company offers. And that's basically it. The challenge comes with source code, so let's go and take a look at that and see what's going on. So I've moved over to VS Code and I have index.php open. I can also see there's a flag.txt here, so this is obviously going to be important to us. Let's find out how we're going to get it. Let's go to the Docker file and see that it is copied to the root directory. Bit of a hint because if this was like in a cookie or something like that, then it's likely we'll need to do a cross site scripting attack. But seeing as it's on the local file system, we're going to need some way to either read files on the system or to gain command execution so that we can read or retrieve these files. So it kind of gives you a hint of the direction of the challenge. Anyway, let's go back to index. There isn't too much in here. It's just static content. And we'll flick through the pages. And in one of them, we'll see this. There is another tab in the navigation bar called control panel, which isn't being displayed because the X forwarded for header isn't set to this specific IP address. So if you didn't have the source code, it'd be a bit hard to work this out. I guess if this was a black box challenge, maybe we would have set this to 127.0.0.1 and then had a tab up here that was like grayed out or whenever you clicked it, it said you need to be like a local user or something like that. And then you'd have a bit of a hint as to the direction of the challenge. But this one comes with a source code. So all we need to do is go and set up this header and I'm going to go I mean, there are plenty of ways you could do this. I'm going to go to Burp Suite and let's do match and replace. And then in here, we can add a header. And you can see here, we can either replace a header or it says leave it blank to add a new header, which is what I want to do. So we'll do X forwarded four and then we'll set it to that IP address. And then that should be it. Let's try and refresh the page. There we go. We've now got this control panel. And if I try to click on that, now I can access this. So we've got like this nuclear control panel where it's reading the temperature and the pressure and it has the status of the control rods. We can click refresh and that'll basically just refresh that. So let's go back to Burp. Let's see what's actually happening. Get panel. We don't actually see much of interest in there. So let's go back to the source code again and let's have a look at the panel. Okay, so here we can see that we need to be on that IP address if we want to get to this panel. And I forgot to mention, but the description of this challenge said something about the company looking to separate their or they were like wanted to do some security testing around their website to make sure that it was completely decoupled from their production environment and from basically the industrial control systems. So they were looking for some pen testers or some bug bounty hunters to go and take a look around and see if that was decoupled properly or if there was any way to access these sensitive functions. So in this case, basically the admin has whitelisted their IP address so that they can access those panels whenever they're out and about. Anyway, what's happening here, we can see there's a post request which takes in an XML content type and then it's going to try to load it. If not, if we don't provide a XML document in a post request, it's instead going to read this reactor data.xml from data, which just has this in it. So presumably if we take a copy of this and then go to the website and provide that as a post request, it should update those values to whatever we provide. Let's give it a go. Let's go here. We'll change this to post request. So change request method. All right, so now it's a post and we want to put this in here, but we also want to change the content type, make sure it's XML. That looks good. Do we have our header? Let's see if this inserts the header. It does. Yes, okay. Uh, well, let's try and change the value then. Let's change that to 31337 send. And yes, it works. All right, so we've just updated the value, although it's not actually updated in the sense that if we refresh the page, it's still 1337 because it's only updating what's being returned in this specific instance. So it's not very realistic in that sense. But what are we going to do here? Well, if we go to something like Hattrix, I think if we just probably search, because I guess if you've never done an XXE attack, you won't know what to look for, but if you just search XML, then the first thing that's going to come up is this XML external entity and the types of attacks that you can do here. And let me just see, you can read through the basics. Here's a way that we can retrieve files. So perhaps we can do this to get back 
the etc password file. Um, here is another one which actually uses the stock check and the product ID and stuff. So we already have values in here which we're going to want to keep. I'm, I can't remember, are these mandatory? If we take them out, will it cause problems? But we can basically recreate some of this. Let me find the file one again. Okay, take a copy of this here. Let's go back to Burp and paste this in here. And we want to change this to be the flag.txt, which is in the root directory. I'm going to change the document type to reactor. And, oh, sorry, that was the element. I'll change the doc type to reactor. And I don't believe I had an element in it before. I don't know whether this makes any difference, to be honest. Then we need to load this entity somewhere. So we've created this. It is called file at the moment. Okay, I'm going to change that to XXE. And then we want to load it in somewhere. Let me do it in the temperature send. And there we go. It comes back with the flag. And if we change that to, let's try it with etc password. All right, that also comes back with the etc password. So yeah, we can now read files on the file system using that XXE vulnerability. So yeah, that's it. Another quick one from me. I tried to make some challenges that were a bit more on the easy to medium side this year, but that were still kind of interesting. So we paired in this one, the spoofing of the IP through the X forwarded four header and an XXE vulnerability. And hopefully you liked the UI. I made these images in mid journey. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.